Who was Caption Edward Smith, Titanic? In Hanley, Staffordshire, England, on January 27, 1850, the son of a potter was born Edward Smith. Like many kids from working-class families, Smith dropped out of school at the age of 12, and when he was a teenager, he joined the crew of Senator Weber, beginning his journey as a sailor. Smith persevered in moving up the ladder in the following years, obtaining his certificates as a second mate in 1871, first mate in 1873, and master in 1875. When Smith was engaged as a junior officer by the White Star Line in 1880, he transitioned from commercial shipping to passenger ships. He oversaw the Baltic, his maiden ship, in 1887. He also married Eleanor Pennington in the same year. The couple's sole offspring, a daughter named Helen, was born in 1902. Smith developed a reputation for being well-liked by both the crew and the passengers during the course of his career. In fact, because he was so well-liked by affluent tourists, he was given the nickname, the Millionaire's Captain. Smith rose to the position of senior captain with the White Star Line after spending many years at sea and fighting in the Boer War. Captain Smith was well-respected and had specific expertise in leading particularly big ships. For her inaugural voyage in 1904, the Baltic, at the time the largest ship in the world, was under Smith's command. He stayed with Baltic until 1907 when he assumed charge of Adriatic for her inaugural trip. He remained Adriatic's captain until 1911. Smith assumed command of the RMS Olympic, the largest ship ever constructed, in 1911. Thirteen weeks after her inaugural voyage, on September 20, 1911, Olympic collided with the British warship HMS Hawk. The Navy attributed the severe damage to both ships to Olympic's enormous size for drawing Hawk toward her. Despite this, when Titanic was finished, White Star Line reappointed Smith as captain. However, no career is without setbacks, and these events did not harm Smith's standing as a captain. Captain Smith was expected to step down after steering the Titanic on her inaugural trip. On April 10, 1912, around noon, the Titanic sailed out of Southampton but soon ran into problems. Rumors about the ship, the people on board, and the circumstances leading up to the tragedy abounded after the Titanic sank. These speculations included claims that Captain Smith was under pressure from the White Star Line to maintain the ship's speed or that he disregarded other ships' iceberg warnings. In reality, both the United States and the United Kingdom opened investigations into the accident to ascertain whether or not the White Star Line was responsible for losses resulting from the loss of life and property. These investigations looked into crucial issues like what impact speed and ice warnings had in the disaster. It is now widely believed that the Titanic was moving too quickly when the tragedy occurred and that if Captain Smith had slowed the ship down, it could have been possible to prevent it. If J. Bruce Ismay, the managing director of the White Star Line, exerted pressure on Smith to keep the ship moving at a certain speed, the commissions were very curious. Although the Titanic was moving quickly, the evidence indicated that it never attained her full speed. In addition, the water was tranquil and the night was clear. In the event that there was any haze or fog, Captain Smith instructed the crew to slow down. The British inquiry found that Captain Smith operated the ship in accordance with the ideal procedures for a captain with his level of expertise, although it's possible that these procedures need to be altered. The evidence demonstrates that he wasn't attempting to set any records or go especially quickly. He wasn't attempting to win anyone over, instead, he was using his judgment in the way he felt was appropriate. He made a mistake, a very serious mistake, but given past practice and experience, it cannot be stated that negligence played any role in it. Without negligence, it is, in my opinion, difficult to hold Captain Smith accountable. The issue of whether Captain Smith disregarded other ships' admonitions regarding the existence of ice also remained in doubt. Fourth Officer Joseph Boxhall claimed that he and Captain Smith plotted the locations of the first ice alerts and were aware that ice was present in their general direction. Later warnings, however, never left the telegraph room because the Marconi system was overwhelmed. Survivors themselves are responsible for some of the stories surrounding Captain Smith and the Titanic. Witnesses claim to have seen Captain Smith save a drowning child and then swim back to the sinking ship to face his demise. Others claim to have seen Captain Smith shoots himself in the head as the ship sank, although it was generally agreed that this was untrue. Instead, 
Most versions state that Captain Smith dove into the ocean from the bridge as the ship sank. Similar disagreement exists regarding Captain Smith's closing remarks. Several crew members said Smith urged his men to behave properly and urged them to be British. Smith reportedly told the remaining crew to look for themselves and the women and children as best they could before returning to the bridge to sink with the ship. The memory of Captain Smith most often conjures up this last display of leadership. We do not know exactly how Captain Edward Smith spent his last minutes, but we do know that on April 15, 1912, he and 1517 other people perished in the North Atlantic. His remains were never found. Thanks for watching.